Thank you for logging on to the website, www.chicagosidersfemaledj.com. Episodes from The Element, and today, I have a local celebrity. I ain't even, I'm a, sh it's time for me to shut up. I'm gonna shut up. I told y'all I had a surprise. So I have in The Element, comedian, radio personality, father, husband, awesome son, amazing friend, the Destin legend, Leon Rogers. What's up, boo? What's up, Sundance? How you doing? I'm chilling, man. I like this setup you got. You like there. it? It's real nice. I feel like I'm on a talk show. I'm in a lounge. You are. Yeah, it's it's cool. episodes from the element. Episodes from the element. I like this concept. You know, as a comedian, you always, you always sit up and you think like, I wish I'd have thought of that. Uh -huh. And this is something I wish I'd have thought of. This is uh -huh. cold. You like it? Y'all stupid. Whoever, <laughs> if y'all don't mess with this, y'all crazy. This is dope. Mm. This is pure internet and TV content. Like, Thank yo, you. produced by Sundance. <laughs> Thank you, Leon. Thank you. Okay, so here's the thing. What made you want to be a comedian? Growing up, I was always the kid in school that got finished with his work before everybody else. Mm. And then started acting a fool and playing around in class and kept mm -hmm. everybody else from doing their work. Mm -hmm. So I've always been outgoing and an extrovert as far as when it comes to people. I never like a room to be quiet. Really? No, I never. I never. I hate walking in a room full of people mm -hmm. and it's quiet. Now, if I go in a room and I'm the only one and it's cool, I can be quiet. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I was born an only child, so I, I like being around people. I do not have brothers and sisters, you know, so anytime I was around other kids or whatever, Mm -hmm. I just had a knack of controlling the room. Mm -hmm. Grew up, you know, my many different travels in life, going to the military mm -hmm. and all that. A lot of my army buddies were like, dude, mm -hmm. you keep us laughing in the field. You should do comedy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I said, well, my, I've been a fool all my life. Why not get paid for it? How did you make the transition from comedian to radio? So I used to do these uh, shows, all jokes aside. On okay. Wallbacks. Remember all jokes aside? Right. Shout, out to Mary, shout out to Mary Lindsay. Okay. Uh, all jokes aside, it was a wonder, wonderful spot. It's where I got my comedy career cultivated. Okay. Uh, the likes of uh, Tony Schofield, George Wilborn, mm -hmm. Steve Harvey, everybody's been through that club. It's legendary. Mm -hmm. And a young lady by the name of Courtney Hicks okay. saw me on stage. Right. Courtney Hicks saw me on stage and she was like, boy, you funny. I went to the station with her one day. She called me up to sit in on our show with her. Mm -hmm. We had a good time. Everybody was laughing crazy. She brought me in a second day, mm -hmm. laughing crazy. And then I didn't hear from him for a while. Mm -hmm. So then I get a call from Jay Allen. Mm -hmm. And Jay Allen said, hey, man, you funny. I know that name. A lot of people like you, man. You funny. Uh, I got a little something for you I want you to do. They put me in the truck. Uh -huh. In the Power 92 truck. I'll never forget this. They put me in the truck. Now I was driving around through Inglewood. I was going to all the... Every time I came up, I was in somewhere like All Girl Guards, Inglewood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was you had in no the, fear. I was in the crazy spots. And I didn't... Mm -hmm. it was, some of it was not necessarily having no fear. Some of it was being a little dumb to the fact that where I was at. Mm -hmm. like, you know, sometimes when you're ignorant and you don't know, it's, it actually works out better for mm -hmm. you because you don't know. And so I'm doing these uh, hits and doing these stuff everywhere. And Jay was like, they love you in the truck. People are calling in, like, mm -hmm. who is this fool in the truck? Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, they bring me into the studio with Courtney Hicks and Stone Pony, and the rest is history. And that's how I started. Like, no formal training, so to speak of. Me neither. None of that. And uh, But I will say this, after I got in the radio, I did end up going to Illinois School of Broadcasting mm -hmm. because I just didn't want to be average. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's the thing I think some of us fall short. We get something by the grace of God when you didn't really have the skill set to be in there. You got in there off your talent. Okay, so now cultivate it. Right. Get better. Right. My whole goal is uh, there are a lot of comics on the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at Ricky yeah. Smiley. We look at Tony Schofield. Myself, D.O. Hughley has a show. Mm -hmm. But there are also a lot of comics that haven't made it big names like Monique mm -hmm. had a radio show they didn't do well Steve, you know Steve Harvey is doing well there are a lot of other comics that have been on radio or been in a position as sidekicks always I've been blessed that I haven't always had to be a sidekick 
Mm -hmm. I've had shows built around me mm -hmm. where, you know, I'm the lead. Whether it was Go Get a Radio with Frankie Robinson on WGCI, whether it was Hood Radio with me and DJ Ferris, which yeah. to this day, I still feel is one of the dopest that. shows ever. <laughs> on Like, we were like a Midwest sway in the sway mm -hmm. in tech like, i remember it that. was nuts with it and then you know because courtney i've been part of history making morning shows uh the first ever woman lead in chicago mm -hmm. morning show with courtney girl baby girl courtney hicks mm -hmm. and myself on on air on, on power and then i came over and worked with crazy howard mcgee yes. another legend in radio I, and i mean i just had the honor of being on in, on 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 at home, mm -hmm. in my element, third largest market in the world. Mm -hmm. And to be a guy just from 98th and Loomis and went to St. Margaret to Scotland Grammar School, mm -hmm. to grow up, to be able to come back home and do radio in your own city and have people that love you and know you hear your voice every mm -hmm. day. It's a blessing. I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm glad. I like where I'm at right now. Do you know who you are? Who am I? That's... Because we live the life, we just go. We absolutely. see the green light absolutely. and we just go. Absolutely. We just keep going. We got to go do our van hits. We got to go absolutely. to the radio station. We got to DJ. We don't, I don't know who I am. I'm just, I just you know keep what? going. That's the first time I've ever heard that. And that, that pretty much sums it up for me. <laughs> I do know this though. I do say, I can say one mainstay that my, my father put into me, you know, uh, rest in peace. I lost my pops like four years ago to cancer, but fuck cancer, I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a grinder, mm -hmm. we grinders. If you were not the comedian Leon, what would you be doing? I would probably be doing my network engineering, which I was doing before I started. Really? Working. I was a network engineer for Shut up, years. Leon, you kinda smart. <laughs> yeah. Go, uh, Leon! <laughs> I was on my way to being MSCSE certified, and I stopped doing it to do comedy. And my father was pissed. Sundance, when I say this is the only time, and my mother can verify this, this is the only time me and my father, because he was like my best friend, and a lot of young black men can't say that. My father was absolutely livid that I quit my job. I was probably making about, at this time, we're talking about 95, 96. I was probably making about 55, 60 grand a year for fixing computers for the board of education. 111 North Canal, shout out to all my old school people there, Miss Sharon Davis, I still love them. My ladies, I love them to death. Had suit and tie every day, rat race, briefcase, really? the whole nine. And I was just like, I wanna do comedy. So I saved up a little money and I quit. What made you become a DJ? Mm -hmm. Comics and DJs are one and the same in this aspect. As a comic, tell a wrong joke, lose the room. As a DJ, play a wrong song, everybody comes off the dance floor. And I saw that, I was like, well, it's the same thing. And I've always loved music. When I was in the military, we did nothing but buy CDs, tapes, and albums. So I had, I had music. That was like, you got all these damn records and music, mm -hmm. bro. DJ, come on. I never thought that I would actually be trying to DJ and book gigs. I mm -hmm. said, it's gonna be a hobby, something I do in my spare mm -hmm. time with the music. But then when I got people like you, I got people like Bulu Mass, I got people like 33 and the 3rd, the V Dub, you know, shout yeah. out to V Dub. They in your ear like, hey boy, you actually kind of know what you're doing. Let right. me find out. Never. I never want to be a celebrity DJ. I want to be a DJ. In 10 years, what are you going to be doing? Here's the dream. Okay. ROG 303 Sports Bar. It'll just be a bar that where people can come, have a good time, talk. We could play all that music, and mm -hmm. it's going to be called ROG 303 which is my father's license plate. Really? Raj 303. Raj 303. Shut up, Leon! Yeah. That is so dope! <laughs> yeah, I, I always thought I about it. I love that. Thing. So a cheers type environment. Uh-huh. With my father's name where everybody come. I got my locals. Or I wanted when people come from out of town. It would be in the south suburbs. They'd be like, I got to go to ROG's 303 because you never know who stopped by. ROG's. Yeah. I ROG's 303. This <laughs> Sundance episodes from The Element. Thank you for logging on to the website, DJ. Hanging out with my good old friend, Leon Rogers. You can check him out. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at Leon Rogers. Same name. Leon Rogers. Yep, that's it. Can no D in my name. Can I get $30? Oh, shit! Got cut, cut! <laughs>